Good morning, Year 4. Let's start our Wednesday Maths lesson today. I'm going to share my screen with you. OK, so can I ask you please to write today's learning objective, which is using the three times table and today's date, which is the 20th of the first 21. Um, if you have a purple pen at home, please could you do this review? OK, so my first question is how many pairs are there? Could you write a number sentence or a calculation to show this representation? Number two, how many fish are there? Again, write a number sentence uh, to show this representation. And number three, could you complete the number track with the missing numbers? Well done. OK, let's have a go now. So how many pairs are there in total? Well, we have got one, two, three, four, five, six groups of three, lots of pair. So six bags full of three pairs. So that would be in total we would have 18 pairs. How many fish are there? Well, again, I have um, three aquariums equal three fish, which would be nine fish in total. And if I'm going to fill in this number track, I'm using my three times table. It's jumping up by three each time. So my next number is going to be 12. Number after that would be 15. My next number after 18 would be 21. My next number 24 would be 27 and my next number after 30 would be 33 and there we have the three times table up to 12. Okay now have a good look please at the three times table. I've got it written here in front of you. What do you notice? Now let's just remind ourselves about some words that we used last lesson which was factor multiplied by factor equals product. What do you notice? with some of the factors that are multiplied together and what happens to the product. Pause the video now and see if you can have a think. OK, now maybe you noticed in the three times table that when you had an odd factor multiplied by an odd factor, you got an odd product. For example, three multiplied by three equals nine. That's a odd number multiplied by another odd number and it equals the product as an odd number. Can we find any other examples of that? Well, here we go. Five times three equals 15. In fact, all the numbers when they're odd multiplied by odd equals an odd product. But what happens when it's an odd or an even number multiplied by an odd factor? When well, when you have your even numbers multiplied by your odd factors, you get an even product. Now you're going to really need to know this, the three times table today to help you. So if you need to at this point, pause the video and really go through your three times table again to really get it cemented into your brain, please do that now. OK, let's explore. Then we're going to using our knowledge of the three times table to help us solve some multiplication and division problems. Let's start off with this problem here. I have a representation. I'm asking this question, how many juggling clubs are there in total? Pause the video and see if you can work that out using a number sentence. Well done. So I have here five groups of three. I have one, two, three, four, five groups, each one with three juggling clubs. Another way to write this oops, would be this. Three add three add three add three add three, which is not a particularly efficient way to do it, which would equal 15. There are 15 juggling clubs in total, but my most efficient way of writing this would be this. Five multiplied by three equals 15. Let's have a go at this. Now this time we're going to be using our three times table to help us solve division problems. Altogether, there are 30 fish here. And there are 10 aquariums in total. How many fish are in each aquarium? Pause the video to see what number sentence you would write down to answer this. Well done. There are 30 fish in total. 30. There are 10 aquariums divided by 10 and there are three fish in each. One, two, three. 30 divided by 10. 
pause the video and think to yourself, how would I check this answer if I wanted to be absolutely certain I was correct? Well done. I would use the inverse. Remember that division is the inverse of multiplication. So I want to check my multiplication. I use division. And when I want to check my multiplication, I use um, sorry, when I check, want to check my division, I use multiplication. So we can use the inverse operation here to transform this division into a multiplication. So I have 30 divided by 10. To check it, I would use this inverse. 10 times 3 equals 30. There's also another way I could write it. I could write it like this. I could say 3 multiplied by 10 equals 30. 30. The answer is the same. Let's have a look at this multiplication problem. 13 times 3. Now you'll know the 3 times table. There isn't a 13 times 3. We only learn it up to 12. So how would I work this out? Pause the video now and see if you can work out two different ways to work out this calculation. Well done. Now, the first way I could do it is I could do it like this. I could partition this number into 10 and 3. And then I would multiply this 10 times 3 equals 30 and 3 times 3 equals 9. I then would add these two totals together, 30 add 9, and I would get 39. That is one way of working out this answer. Another way of doing it would be this. I could work out, first of all, 12 times 3, which is 36, using my times table knowledge. But I need to work out 13, so I need to do one extra. 1 times 3, which is 3. And then I would add these two totals together, 36 add 3, and I would get the same answer, 39. You have the choice today. If you have a question like this, you can choose one or other of these methods to use to answer the question. Pause the video now and have a go at step one. If step one is where you usually start your work, you must complete it now. If you usually start on step two or three or above, then you can jump over step one now and carry on with the video. Well done. Now, if you've just completed step one, don't forget to mark your work before you move on. You want to see that you're getting it correct. If you're not getting it correct, it's worth checking and going back and watching the video again to check your, where you're going wrong. Here are the answers for step one. Well done. OK, let's keep exploring now. We're going to do slightly trickier questions. We're going to explore here using the greater than and less than symbols. I have these two numbers on the board, five, and then this calculation, 18 divided by three. I want to see which is at the greater value, five or this number. Before I can answer this, I need to work out what this answer would be. I need to work out what 18 divided by three would be. Now, sometimes this is the way I like to write it down, just to remind myself, I like to use my three times tables and I would turn it around using the inverse. And instead of going straight to division, I'm going to use a multiplication. And I think like this, three multiplied by a missing number equals 18. Pause the video now to see if you can work out what do I times three by to make 18. Well done. So. 18 divided by 3 or 3 multiplied by missing number equals 18 and the answer would be of course 6. So my answer here would be 6. Now I can clearly see which one is the greater number. 6 is the largest number and so I need to put the correct symbol in the middle. I'm going to use look up here to work out which is the right one. Well, five is less than six. Because remember, we're reading it like a sentence from that side to that side. Five is less than six. Here's another way of showing this. Here's my calculation, 18 divided by three. 
But here's a really lovely way to show that calculation using the bar model. You know how I like to use the bar model to show my maths. I have the total of 18 divided by uh, 3 and each group equals 6. Pause the video now and have a go at these step two questions, please. Well done. Now have a go at step three. Well done. Now don't forget to mark your work here before you move on and go on to our next lot of questions. So pause and answer what you've just done. Excellent. OK, finally, let's try a little word problem. There are 12 eggs in a carton. How many eggs would there be in three cartons? Pause the video to work out the number sentence that you would write to work this calculation out. Well done. Now, hopefully you have come up with this answer. There are 12 eggs in one carton. Therefore, in three, there would be 36 because 12 multiplied by three equals 36. Now remember, that isn't a correct answer at this point. I need there to be an answer in a sentence because it is a word problem. So, in three cartons, there would be 36 eggs as 12 multiplied by three equals 36. And I've missed out a full stop. Pause the video now and have a go at these two word problems. Remember to write a sentence to answer and use the stem, stem sentence. I know this because also remember to write a number sentence and, or a calculation in your answer to prove you're correct. Well done. Now, finally, let's mark our last set of answers. So take a purple pen and mark those now. Well done. Thank you, Year 4, and hope you've worked very successfully through your three times table. Um, I look forward to seeing your work later on.